The labrum is a strong fibrocartilaginous rim that attaches to and surrounds the glenoid or socket of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. The labrum can be torn in several ways. It can be torn with a fall on an outstretched hand, a traction injury to the shoulder, landing directly on the shoulder, or overhead sports such as throwing. When torn, the labrum can be a substantial source of pain and disability for an athlete. Labral tears can be fixed in a minimally invasive way, which is arthroscopy. This video depicts a posterior labral repair in a young volleyball player who tore her posterior labrum diving for a ball. The humeral head and glenoid are labeled on this shoulder MRI. The blue arrow is pointing to the anterior labrum, which is well attached to the glenoid. The white is the dye that's been injected into the shoulder. The red arrow points to the posterior labrum, and the yellow arrow points to the dye that gets between the posterior labrum and the glenoid. This means that there is a posterior labral tear. When we view this tear from inside the shoulder joint, we first see a lot of fraying and abnormality in the posterior labrum. As we change our viewing portal, we can evaluate more of the shoulder. We've got the humeral head and the glenoid, or ball and the ball and socket. The probe is now pointing to the normal anterior labrum on the right side of the screen. The posterior labrum is on the left side of the screen, and you can see the fraying and tearing of it. This shaver instrument will gently remove and suction away the frayed portion of the labrum. All of this procedure is done with the patient on their side in what we call the lateral decubitus position through these three small plastic cannulas that keep the water in the joint that's pumped in. This is all done underwater. You can see the shaver instrument there going in one of the cannulas and the arthroscope in the other. The probe is now evaluating the posterior labrum and seeing how it is detached from the glenoid or socket. The next step is to debride the glenoid neck with this shaver to gently get it down to some nice healthy healing bone so that the labrum can be reattached and heal nicely. You can see how the labrum is detached from the bone. The next step is to place the fixation device or devices which are the suture anchors. This is a drill with a guide that will be placed right up on the glenoid rim. You can see the drill bit coming into place now. And we drill a small pilot hole on the glenoid rim which will house our suture anchor. The suture anchor is a bioabsorbable, very strong device that's placed into that pilot hole through the guide and then tapped into place. It has very strong suture attached to it and you can pull on that suture to know that that suture anchor is well fixed into the bone. See the two blue sutures. Those sutures can now be utilized to fix the labrum. This is a lasso device which allows us to shuttle one of the sutures through the labrum. It's sharp, it has a little wire loop inside of it that will allow us to pass the suture. This passing device is passed through the labrum at the area of the tear. The wire loop is passed through and grasped with a suture grasping forceps from another one of the working cannulas. We then take the suture limb and pass it through the wire loop and pull that back through the joint. It goes through and underneath the torn labrum and it's brought back out of the initial cannula that the passing device was placed into. With one suture through the labrum and one not through the labrum, it can now be tied down. This is a special arthroscopic slip knot that's a locking type knot. We have to tie knots on the outside of the shoulder and pass them down into the shoulder since this is a minimally invasive arthroscopic technique. The little loop that I'm creating on my index finger is the locking loop. This will de be deployed to lock the knot. This is a knot pusher which has a little hole in it. The knot is passed down one of the suture limbs into the shoulder joint. 
knot slides into place and the labrum can be retensioned to the bone in a very taut fashion. And now the locking loop is deployed so that it's nice and locked. We then back up this locking sliding knot with what we call three alternating half hitches for maximum security. The suture tails can then be cut precisely with an arthroscopic suture cutting device. The next suture anchor is then placed slightly more proximal on the glenoid. The same suture anchor is utilized. These are very small 2.4 millimeter in diameter absorbable anchors. The body resorbs them over time. The same type of suture passing device is utilized. Once again, it has the wire loop that allows for passing of suture. It's grasped with the suture grasping forceps and shuttled back into the joint through the torn labrum with the aid of the suture passing device. The same type of locking sliding knot is tied. The knot pusher allows appropriate tensioning of the loop of this knot construct. And the same type of half hitches are passed and the sutures are cut in a precise fashion. A third suture anchor is required. After drilling the hole, the anchor is placed in. The suture passing is performed in the same fashion. The knot is tied in the same fashion. This repetitive precision is necessitated for an anatomic repair. And then one more anchor is required for this particular posterior labral tear. And suture had been passed in the same fashion, the knot tied in the same fashion, and the sutures are cut to give us a nice anatomically restored posterior labrum. This probe can evaluate the repair. You can see how it's nicely, securely placed back up into the appropriate position so that it can heal back over time. It is expected that this volleyball player will have a full recovery.